Hey, folks, welcome to Verified Investing. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist and Pro Trader. All right, today, folks, I want to give you the latest update on Bitcoin, the S&P, the NASDAQ 100, where the crypto market's headed, where the stock market is headed, where to position yourself. All right, so again, we've seen some whipsaw in the cryptocurrency market, specifically Bitcoin. I want to get right to the charts here and take a look. All right, so if you take a look at the chart here on Bitcoin, you can see that again, everything has been working out just like I predicted in terms of the head and shoulder pattern over here. The break point was here. The calculated target was 30,000. When that was nearing that neckline, it certainly went right there. There's 30,000 to the dollar amount, to the penny. Now, from that point on, you went into this chop where investors were kind of uncertain about the next move in Bitcoin. Was it bullish? Was it bearish? Ultimately, they started to see price upticking. It came up to resistance, which was right here. So here's resistance, here's resistance, and then right up here. And when it broke out, that sealed the fate that it would do a retrace to the scene of the crime. And you've heard me use that term very, very often. Uh, that's basically a retrace to the former trend line that was broken, whether it was a bearish break in this case or a bullish break in another case. All right, so what happened? You rallied all the way up there. You literally kissed that line, then had a big sell-off, bearish consolidation, and another big sell-off. You know that what I've said off of that trend line, and I've gone on record on many interviews saying that from that trend line sell-off, you would come down and retest this level. Now, why is this a level? The answer is pretty simple. When you have a level that's resistance on the upside and you hammer on it, hammer on it, and hammer on it, and finally break out, what happens is when you come back to that level, resistance, former resistance now becomes support. So this is support. And what you can see here is you sold off into that level, you bounced, now you retraced it today again and touched it and are getting a little bit of a bounce. Now, I want to be clear on this. The projections of 18 to 20,000 as, as a downside target on Bitcoin, that has not changed. All right. Now, the only thing, again, that, that is, is cognizant or important here is that you're going to have bounces at these support levels. So here's this 40 to 41,000 support. You're going to get bounces until it finally breaks through. When could it break, break through? My guess is it'll break through in the next two weeks. All right. So probably in the next two weeks. Now, you could still float up ahead of that and then flush in two weeks from now. But the point being is that eventually you're going to break down below this trend line. And what you're going to do is start trading in this range again, up and down and up and down. You'll test 30. You'll bounce back up, maybe test 40, then test 30. Eventually, after probably three months or so in this range, maybe a little bit less, could only be a month to two months, but in general, give it about three months, you should break 30,000, which will take you very quickly down to the 20 to 18,000 level. All right. Now, once you're at 18 to 20,000, it's important to understand that you could easily pierce and go a little bit lower. That's my downside target where I really start accumulating aggressively, but I absolutely will leave room on the table to add more if it goes lower. The reason why it could go lower is that the markets in general, whether it's the crypto market or the stock market or anything like that, they're ruled by emotion. All right. Just like, you know, in general, when we were heading towards 65,000, there are very few people thought we were going to get to 65,000 when we were at 30 or 40 or 50,000. It was a really a long shot. Now, granted, there were those crazies out there that said it was going right to 100,000 or 500,000. I never thought that. That's not the way markets work, folks. And again, a lot of amateurs out there think these type of ways. Uh, it just doesn't happen, right? So you have to come back and recheck back down. That's where that 18 to 20,000 level comes from. But remember, just like the aggressive bullishness on the long side at 65,000, where people were clamoring, you were hearing the talking heads talking it up, every small investor, even non-investors were clamoring to get into Bitcoin at 65,000, you're going to see fear at 18 to 20, which means that you could get a little bit more selling there because of panic that could take it lower. So in general, just be aware of that. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the absolute low pivot. It means that that's your general downside target to accumulate. If it goes a little bit lower, just use it as a gift to accumulate more, in my opinion. All right, so that's your general update on uh, Bitcoin. I do wanna talk about the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P. And the reason why is because over the last couple of days, we've had a big bounce in the market. And there's so it's so funny to watch because 
you know, as soon as you get a one or two day bounce in the market, the bulls come right out of the woodwork and, and they get so bullish talking about the markets going back to all time highs. And, you know, this was just your classic pullback and everything like that. The problem is that is not what the charts are showing. And what I want to do here is show the S&P chart to get you guys on point. All right. So we already talked about in my previous videos how the chart showed major strength early in the rally from the lows of 2020, right? We know that the distance here and the length of this first rally off of this trend line was the biggest. It then got smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where it barely was above the line. If we zoom in, then it actually broke the line by a little bit. The next time it broke it by more. And here you can see it barely was on top of the line. Then it confirmed below and it couldn't get back above the line. What that showed you again was that the, the power of the rally was failing. It was getting weaker and weaker. It was still strong enough to go up a little bit. It just wasn't powerful to, enough to stay above that line. That leads us to this rollover where the most significant thing that ha has happened since March of 2020, since the low of this trend line, if I go out, since this low here occurred. And that was where you got a lower high, a lower low, excuse me. Now, again, look at all the lows, low, higher, 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 low, right? All higher lows and all higher highs too, which tell you that the trend was up. The problem is this latest downdraft made a lower low. Here was your low. Here's a lower low. That is the first time technically that that has happened since this rally began off the COVID March 2020 panic lows. That is significant on a technical basis. Okay, now the one thing we don't have yet in place is a lower high. So if you look at your high, higher, high, higher, high, higher, high, higher, high, we're bouncing up. Now, because you made a lower low, you can kind of extrapolate that you likely will make a lower high as well. All right, so that will change the trend. In other words, that if we, let's say we go up to 450 or 445 or, or even, even just below this all-time high on the S&P, which was around four, let's see, 454, as long as you don't take out that high and you roll over, you now have a lower low, which confirms the change in trend. Now, the reason why you wouldn't want to get too bullish on this rally here off of these lows is because you have the lower low and you don't know yet if you've taken out this high or if you will take out this high. If you take out the high, then bullishness absolutely is warranted. Then you have a higher high again in spite of the lower low, okay? Uh, but again, until that happens, you can't assume it. So as of now, the lower low takes control. And until we break this high, you have to stay more in the bearish camp of the overall S&P 500. All right, so again, it's a nice little bounce from the lows a few days ago, but until we take out that all-time high, you've made a lower low. We know the trend has broken. We know the, the, the rally was weakening and continuing to weaken over the last multiple months. And again, you want to be more cautious. And in my opinion, you want to be more bearish until the market proves otherwise. And this is the beautiful thing about technical analysis. You know, there's no need to be, you know, guessing. There's no need to be using your emotion to hope for something or dream. The charts are what the charts are. They tell you exactly what's going on. Here we have a lower low. Now we have to wait to see, do we get a higher high or a lower high? Lower high would be the absolute most bearish case scenario. That means the trend has changed and the markets will continue down probably for months, if not a year or so. All right. If we can make a higher high, then the market has a negative and a positive signal. They cancel each other out and the market can be neutral to positive bias again. All right. So it is the charts. That's the beauty of it. The other thing I want to show you guys is the NASDAQ 100 chart here. OK, and then we'll go into some opportunities out there that I see. But the NASDAQ 100 chart has had a good bounce. But again, if you look at past hits of this upper trend line of this channel, right? So if we look at this here and if we go back even to where this thing started over here and I can actually extend it out even down here. So, you know, you have that pivot point, which extends out and so forth. But you can see again how each time you hit this trend line, it really goes back a long way. Trend line, big sell off down to this line. I should really extend that line down a little bit. Then you have this hit here, pull back to this trend line. Here, you didn't even get there and pulled back. Here, you hit it. You have to assume you're going down to this trend line. And again, technical analysis, when you're looking at probabilities, folks, and that's what technical analysis is, is the ability to put the odds in your favor. It doesn't mean you're going to be right 
over and over again, right? It doesn't mean you're going to be right over and over again. What it means is that in general, if you have the probabilities in your favor, you're going to be right seven out of 10 or eight out of 10 times, which in this game is enough to make you a multi multi millionaire, maybe even more. Okay, so again, the probabilities are now telling us that we could have a rollover and we should have a rollover down to this trend line where you'll hit major support on the QQQ. The other thing to watch is you may have a head and shoulders starting to form here. What do I mean by that? Well, this is a shoulder, no doubt. This is a head, no doubt. What we're watching now is can this go like this and roll over and create a shoulder? If you do, you have a neckline right here which if it breaks actually even signals that you would go below this trend line based on a calculated target. So again, these are all things that we're just following in this market and we want to kind of follow and see and, and decipher basically what's going to happen here. What are the probabilities essentially uh, telling us? Now, I want to be clear, probabilities can shift. One thing I always tell my members at, at uh, inthemoneystocks.com in my service verified investing alerts is that Every day I relook at the charts, right? Because every day you get a new candle on the daily chart when the markets are open. And every day it's a new piece of the puzzle. So you have to continue to watch every day because you may get a new piece of the puzzle that doesn't mesh with your old thinking. And it changes the probabilities of the next move. You might've thought it was gonna be down. Now this new candle takes it away and says, okay, probabilities have now shifted to up. It's possible. So remember, the beautiful thing about trading is that every day you get new information, things can change. All your goal is to put the probabilities in your favor um, pretty much at all times, even if that changes your general outlook. Okay, the last thing I wanna do is talk about some opportunities out there that I'm seeing. Let's go back to the charts and quickly touch base. I continue to be a big fan of Viacom here, folks. It is actually green today. Nice little move up. Not a big move here, but one of the things I'm watching on this chart here, folks, you have a trend line down here. And by the way, talk about going to sleep for a stock. It really remarkable. So you have that trend line there. And then I think you can actually utilize this trend line here. All right. So, so one of the things here, it's kind of cool is you, you have it to this pivot and it comes right here. And then you are peaking above that. I'm hopeful this is the start of a final bigger breakout. I'll be honest with you guys. You know, I've traded Viacom fairly often here from this drop. We were in it. We sold it up here. We were then back in it. And we've been sitting in it for like a month plus, which is somewhat unusual, right? But the bottom line is it pays a 2.5% dividend. It's a PE of 4, PE of 9. I mean, and it's a buyout candidate. So for me, that keeps me in the trade. And I'm hopeful that the breakout here really starts to send this thing north, maybe on some good news about an interested buyer, although it is a little tough to find a buyer, no doubt, with the government regulating and not wanting some big firms to buy uh, this company out. But I do think there is a possibility there. So I continue to like that chart. Um, in terms of being long or short the market, the equity markets, I'm for sure short right now, net short. Um, in fact, yesterday on the rally, I re-picked up. So we had sold an ETF that was short the S&P when we had dropped a few days ago to those lows. I re-shorted the market, the S&P, by buying that ETF again. So just to give you guys insight, it was the SPXU. So I think that's the right play to do on that. And then you also have some other plays. I mean, even though I'm down on this trade, I continue to like Alibaba. Um, you know, it just continues to be a worry in, in China based on the, you know, Evergrande situation. Does it have a contagion effect within China? It uh, doesn't seem to be a worry the last couple of days about the U.S. and the global economy. But, you know, anytime you get opportunities to buy things when there's blood in the street, I just have to accumulate. And that's what I've been doing here, folks. I've just been continuing to accumulate uh, shares of Alibaba as it comes down, got my average down pretty nicely and just patiently waiting for that to turn back up. One of the few areas where I'm okay investing in this environment where things are so pricey. Okay, all right, so I think that's about all I have for you guys today. You've got your Bitcoin update, you've got your S&P and NASDAQ update, you've got a couple trading opportunities out there. Actually, one more trading opportunity that I continue to like is CGC. All right, let me show this chart here, folks. It is oversold, bounced a couple days ago here, but again, coming back in, this is a marijuana stock. There was a banking law or a banking rule passed in the House. We'll have to see if it gets through the Senate that would make it much easier for marijuana companies to utilize banks, which they have a very hard time with doing right now. And then you also have the possibility that Constellation Brands could buy the rest of the company out. They own 40% uh, for $6 billion. The whole company now is only worth about $5 billion and change. So they could buy the remaining 60% for pennies on the dollar of what they originally spent. Uh, the CBD drink market, marijuana drink market, especially if legalization is coming, is going to be massive. So I think down at these levels, 
to kind of tuck this stock away. You can see how much it sold off. It makes a lot of sense. The last thing I'll say is the government, the U.S. government will end up federally legalizing marijuana. And the reason I know that is because the federal government is, especially over the next three to five years, is going to need revenue. They're talking about tax hikes, long-term cap gains hikes, um, highest tax bracket hikes. Um, they're, they're going to have to raise tax revenue to pay this massive amount of spending that they're doing. Uh, one of the easy ways to bring in tens of billions of dollars a year is to federally legalize marijuana. I mean, that's all they'd have to do is just lay, basically legalize it and then take in tens of billions of dollars a year. Eventually, they will, it will happen. Whether it's in one year or two years or three years from now, it will happen. When that happens, stocks like CGC are an easy double. So even if you've got to wait a year or two you know, to make 100%, that's not a bad trading opportunity, at least for me. All right. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Have a great weekend. I'll keep you guys fully posted. Come find me uh, on Twitter at Gareth Soloway. And obviously, come find me at InTheMoneyStocks.com under Verified Investing Alerts. Take care, folks.